Hey, Shudia. Hey, hey. Uh, I think hey, how are you doing tonight? Uh, Erin might not come. Oh, sorry, you cut out a little bit. Um, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think we're good. Uh, okay. Uh, Erin might not come. Might not come? Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, I think we are good to start. Hi, guys. Okay. Hi, Slava. Hi. Should we wait for five minutes or shall we start? Are we just waiting for Mahesh, or do we know who else might come? Mahesh, uh, I just text him. I think you could probably start uh, and have him jump in a second. Uh, yeah, uh, coming to uh, like, uh, I'm right now scrapping out uh, through selenium like uh, most of the things we have got is all uh, uh, image and pdf datas and trying out to get any textual data or something like that so because uh, if you get again uh, image or pdf data again we need to convert it into textual data uh, so i'm trying out any like possible if if there is any possibility of getting any textual data, then it will be uh, great. Uh, I think Alex is trying out some scrapping. I think so. Uh, yeah. So I I just picked a website kind of randomly, and um, and it's okay so far. Uh, but it's it's a lot of PDFs as well. Uh, so some of them, I think may have some some text but if we have text i think we can use maybe maybe we can use the newspaper newspaper 3k uh package so anyways i guess uh our question for you slava is do we already have in the pipeline uh, a pdf to text converter or an image to text converter uh mm -hmm. yeah Okay, so uh, the problem with uh, PDF text uh, because we're dealing with historical text, and obviously we, we had different uh, uh, TypeScript that time, and it's not possible to uh, do OCR in a reliable way. We should use some some deep learning, and uh, so there is a tool called uh, Transcribus, and uh, it was developed in in Europe and. Uh, at the moment, it's the best tool to get some text out of uh, scans, like historical documents. 
but uh, this problem is quite uh, complicated so uh, my advice will be not to start with it but just to try to find some apis that can deliver some textual information so there is uh, um, ar um, article uh, published on wikipedia with historical sources and it would be nice to start with something that uh, people already uh, collected and uh, there are a lot of archives in the United States and in other countries doing that. So why not start with simple task and after to increase uh, complexity? I think archives have, uh, have some APIs for that. Mm -hmm. But have you tried with API? Yeah, I have uh, tried out an API, but it is giving just image and uh, image basically nice okay so it's just just for images so you can query and uh, these uh, search terms but but it's just getting back images is what you mean uh, yeah like uh, is that the I open just, library api i not open library the uh, another one library of congress uh-huh ah, okay. so mm. uh, okay. but i think archives archive website have have some apis to it uh, i don't know much about it i can try it out it has and even open library has some apis for it but i don't know whether uh, it will give textual data or not but uh, there is some APIs i can check out mm -hmm. But look, the problem with historical uh, data sets, uh, like already said, there is very low quality and it depends from basically from the century. And uh, something that uh, was published in, let's say, 1920 or something can be recogni recognized uh, for like 60%, I think, not more. At least. Uh, when I started to uh, harvest information from Dutch uh, Royal Library, of course, uh, some scans via OCR in, in, in with high quality in, uh, full text, but most of them not. So I'm not sure that uh, we can use this uh, technique for, um, uh, for scans that uh, we will collect from other sources. It will be exactly the same quality probably. And there is a tool called Tesseract, and uh, basically it, it was a uh, uh, commercial company like 20 years ago, and after it became bankrupt, and Google just uh, basically bought it and uh, made uh, this tool open source, so you can take a look. There is some, some machine learning also involved, and uh, you can train uh, your own models uh, and uh, well, it's pretty uh, good quality, but uh, it's time consuming. So if you would like, uh, of course you can try, but uh, it will take quite a lot of uh, time from you. Do you notice, Rakt, someone? Uh, I, I ran across it when I was doing a little bit of research, but I didn't look into it much. So I'll have to check it out. Okay, I will put it in, in, uh, in the chat. And second tool called uh, Transcribus. And uh, it's an uh, uh, application basically that uh, can be installed. So uh, this tool you can download and you can install on your desktop and uh, you can just uh, basically uh, upload some, some images and you can get uh, full text. But oh, quality is also, is not a, oh. It's yeah, th there might be some broken words, like broken letters. This is what I mean. So sometimes yeah. also because because uh, uh, if you have historical source, so it's a different density and uh, probably uh, uh, the quality of scan can be not so high if it was scanned uh, some time ago. Uh, I mean resolution. So in some of cases, uh, it will not uh, get any results at all any full text yeah but i think so, yeah. uh, uh, which, uh, the api which we got it has nice resolu resolution i think so 
I'll just share my screen and screen. Yeah, please, please, please show us. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Mm, I think it's coming. Yeah, we can see it now. Yeah, these these are the okay. like these are the data we have got right now uh, about Spanish mm -hmm. flu, uh, and the quality is pretty much good. I think so. We can either put it in text. Oh, it is available in text and PDF and JPEG. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, what will happen if you click on the text? Can you actually uh, create the process to? Uh, okay, yeah. it's uh, yeah. Uh, I think. Okay, it's just quite good quality already. Yeah, I didn't absorb this. So uh, I think um, in this in this URL you you already have a date. Obviously, from 1918, uh, and you have probably persistent identifier of this article. Uh, yeah. Uh, starting from SN87. Uh, sorry, the, uh, no, so, I have changed uh, the date. The process that. The, yeah. I, know, I, I have I have set the date 1918 to 1920. Yeah, uh, these are the like mm -hmm. uh, archives. So from basically, yeah, you, you can you can build a process that. Uh, it can can recognize all these persistent identifiers on the page after you will search something, and uh, I think you can just uh, scrape it directly. All these full text. Yeah, I think so. Uh, just uh, like uh, using the import library, I can uh, uh, just give a request to it, and I can get all the uh, required necessary data. Yeah, yeah. I think so. And probably you don't need to, to, to download scans, you can get uh, just full text. Yeah, got it. And uh, uh, can you go up a little bit? Yeah. I just want to see if, uh, yeah, up, uh, I mean, I want yeah. to see how many results. Yeah, okay, so pages available. Oh wow, 16 millions. Okay, that's something. And uh, on Spanish flu, uh, 2000, right? Uh, yeah. No, on, I think, yeah, 2093. Okay, I see. Well, I think it's already something because it's only for uh, 1918, right? If I'm correct. Uh, yeah, 1918 to 1920. Uh-huh. Okay. So it's yeah. not bad. So if you'll scrape it, uh, I think we'll get some some, some uh, data set already. Yeah. Okay. And uh, more sources you already found like that? Uh, I found uh, like... Uh, I think we have I at least one more. Sorry, I didn't get you. Oh, I was just saying the open library. We found that one. Uh, uh, yeah. Got an API for it. Uh, yeah. Basically, when I uh, when I was going through the docs of uh, this uh, Library of Congress, uh, it is it stated that uh, the API is generally taken from like all the resources are taken from uh, open library. So I think open library has some API to it. We can uh, get the archives from that also, like all the newspaper details. Uh -huh. Okay, interesting. And uh, there is something called archive.org. Uh, I don't know like whether we get uh, newspaper articles or not, but uh, it is... Uh, like... no, archive.org is archiving all uh, web content. Uh, oh, yeah. Basically any page. So it's not really suitable for newspapers. Okay, okay. Uh, can't, can't we have uh, like articles, web articles? Sorry, can can you repeat it again? 
uh, like can't, can't we uh, have uh, web articles as a data set well um <laughs> We don't have access to uh, their source, so this is okay. why we need to scrape it. Okay, 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 got it. But I think uh, what you can actually do, um, if you'll uh, open in a cycle page by page, and after you'll recognize this persistent identifier, so it's in URL, so probably you can, yes, so uh, now you can see there is LCCN uh, slash, and after you can find persistent identifier. Okay. So probably if you'll open a page with um, all articles and uh, find all uh, all these persistent identifiers, so you can get full text in, in data set easily. Okay. So, I, I, uh, yeah. And. Uh, yeah, I don't think we need something. Um, can you just go to uh, full text again? I, I'm just interested to, uh, to to see some metadata. Yeah, ju just a minute. Just... Like uh, publication date and um, probably newspaper title and this kind of stuff. Just click on some image and go to uh, yeah. text here. Yeah, so click on text. Yeah, I, okay. Okay, oh yeah, so so we have, okay, so we have, uh, uh -huh. so I think it's, uh, it's not title of this article, but it's title of newspaper, right? So, yeah. Okay. I, I think how it is working is when I, uh, when I use the keyword, like, uh, when I search a Spanish flu year, it is just marking wherever the Spanish flu is there in the uh, newspaper. Like all, all these red marks you mm -hmm. can find, it just like, it can and be in any page. Like it can be in the uh, page five or page six. It is just uh, uh, highlighting that keyword with the, uh, like, and it is giving the full uh, result as full, uh, full newspaper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, because when I was uh, trying it out, like uh, you can see here, uh, the text is Thomas, and wherever the Thomas keywords is there, it is uh, retrieving all the uh, those datas. But the when I click on this page, uh, it will redirect to full newspaper, mm -hmm. not the particular page okay. I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think uh, anyway, it's a good start if you you manage to uh, harvest all, all uh, Spanish flu related uh, publications and uh, news articles from this source. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we need more, obviously. And uh, Alex, you said about another source that we can use. Uh, Do you have URL for us? And uh, which is the yeah uh, just sorry um yeah, yeah. so uh, I have another one I I don't remember what the URL is sorry I'm away from the computer right now mm -hmm. but yeah, I think it's I, like uh, uh, was it HRVM or HRMV.org something like that uh -huh. um sorry for this ah uh, yeah I got it I got it yeah it is open. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so this one, you know, I had been scraping PDFs and then I realized, oh, or I've been trying to scrape PDFs and then I realized that there was some more text on the left-hand side when you go into the articles. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I think maybe I could just scrape that text. I mean, right now I'm still just trying to get the, um, and I'm, I'm using Beautiful Soup. Uh, but mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe I need to switch to Scrappy or something else. I don't mm -hmm. have much experience with the other packages yet. No, I, think, I think Beautiful Soup is, is something that will fit in this task. But if we want some interaction, we need to go with Selenium. Because I think we will be wanting some interaction. Or do we not? 
I personally feel that uh, uh, we need to go for Scrappy. I think so Scrappy can crawl uh, multiple sites at a time. Like uh, instead of going uh, one by one, it, it can go multiple uh, times, like multiple sites at a time. Well, I mm -hmm. think that would be helpful um, when we find sites, like when we find multiple sites. Right now we only have like two or three sites. And so I think to learn a new package may be maybe overkill no what do you think if we if we were scraping pdfs and we had to scrape all of those links on that wikipedia page 100 percent, you know we should uh i think scrappy would would be awesome but we have an api for library of congress right mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we have and then the other two sites open library i think has an api we found and the site that I'm using doesn't have an API, but uh, I mean, I think Beautiful Soup works for it. Uh, I mean, like, you know, you just cycle through each of the pages. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What, what, what's, what's your expertise, Slava? Uh, well, uh, I would say um, all tools uh, are good. So, you can use uh, whatever you want, but uh, my preference actually, if you'll use Selenium, because um, with Selenium, if you'll install Selenium IDE, uh, you can speed up process of uh, harvesting. So it's it's like uh, you can just write a scenario and uh, um, it will open page by page. And uh, you, after you can save uh, all your actions as a project, and it will produce a so-called site file. And in this file, you can actually see all X paths uh, for uh, all elements and attributes. Yeah, where actually you can find information. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, just uh, name a project something and record this test. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, after sure. open this page that you just showed, and uh, you can write, uh, you can create a scenario, and after you can just um, get all information you need from a site file. And uh, you can use uh, Beautiful Soup or uh, Scrapey or whatever, because uh, it's kind of common thing. It's already a pattern. Yeah. Once you uh, like, once you do so, it. So now, now, now go to to article. Uh, click on article and uh, uh, click on um, full text. Yeah, I think the text is uh, text will come in the left side. Yes. Yeah, so, so now highlight text. Highlight this element. Yeah, just a minute from first. Yeah, I think. Okay, yeah. should should be enough. So so, so now I I think, I think you can you can stop it. Stop yeah. Selenium IE and uh, uh, you can save project. And if you'll go to this uh, site file, you can find all uh, patterns that you need to extract this information. It is very pretty simple. Like uh, all the IDs and uh, CSS path will come. Uh, like yeah will be recorded and just use it in our uh, yes. python uh, yeah it will be basically in this uh, site file yes yeah so uh, um now say uh, uh, okay so you already saved the project so now you you can open this uh, file it will just uh, produce json basically json with all patterns and uh, can you open it uh, like, uh, should I open my? Uh, like... So now, now you, sh you should you should go to uh, I think uh, there is export field or something export. For, um... Yeah. Oh, I... uh, like, where should I go? I don't have idea about it. On action B, action B, just click. Uh, yeah. Okay, export. Yeah, got it. Export and select uh, Python by test. Yes. Okay, got it. 
Okay, so so now open this file. Yeah, got it. Okay, so look, uh, every action actually got tracked and uh, you, you can follow it, right? So, yeah, go down and uh, I think in this CSS selector, you can actually, uh, you can use it in beautiful soup to recognize these elements. Uh, okay, well, yeah. The So basically, if you will uh, replace uh, URL uh, with uh, another uh, no, uh, I, uh, no, if URL you, to, to another article, you, you can uh, extract content, I think. No, we, we can't actually change the URL because the, this, you, uh, this ID might be, uh, like, you need to change the ID also for that. Mm, well, do you think so? Yeah, uh, I think like, the IDs are specific to uh, yeah, specific to the website, to, right? Uh, yeah, IDs are specific. Like if I go to this website, the ID might change. Uh, the IDs are different for every website, right? Uh, it is dynamically like if they use uh, React. Yeah, yeah. For, 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 for website, for website, it will be different. But I mean, for one okay. website, it will be the same. Okay. So you can See, paper... you're talking about the same website. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think. Uh, it might not. Uh, it might change in the website also. Let me check where it went. Yeah. Uh, let I think me... it should be. If they built the website well, it should be standardized. <laughs> I right. think so as well. Yeah. Uh, it's just the... uh, basically a template we are recognizing yeah. now. Yeah, the the uh, like navbar will not uh, not change, but uh, the either uh, the other content might change here. If I search uh, because search option is dynamic, if I want to search something, uh, I just search uh, Spanish now. Uh, Spanish is different mm -hmm. from Spanish flu, so the ID might change here. Does Selenium uh, take up the text triggers like the inputs we have entered? Yeah, even it will take like uh, the uh, it will take the ID of this search bar uh, bar or like if it uh, it will take XPath or ID or CSS selector from search bar. So, so it matters. Like dynamic. Like we click on while recording Selenium ID, uh, maybe we can click on the text field and put the Spanish flu, uh, the text that we are entering, that we are searching for. Will the Selenium uh, search while performing those checks? Will it search for Spanish text or not? That's my question. Uh, it, will uh, it will check, like whatever actions we are doing, same thing, it will be uh, recorded by the Selenium. So it will check. Uh, it is uh, like, it is just okay. having some. Uh, like uh, something called actions, all those actions will be recorded. Uh, even if you want to send a something uh, textual, uh, like text, there is some actions for it. Just uh, uh, using that actions, we can send it. Mm -hmm. So maybe the ID will not change because if we are following the same pattern. So maybe we can list them in some way or other. Uh, yeah, let me check once. Like, uh, let me change. Uh, okay, I need to pause. select the path. Well, I still think that uh, we can try to follow this path. And uh, if we'll create template, uh, it should be universal for all uh, mm. articles from yes. this course. Yes. Let me check. To try. Uh, yeah. 
And also, okay. uh, so now you, you generated complete uh, Python uh, Python class for test, but um, in in selenium, in selenium you, you can also generate uh, JSON, which is much more uh, universal. Okay. And basically, you can read with JSON to any uh, package you would like to use, and uh, well. Okay. Uh -huh. I think it's better than you can. Let me check whether it will work or not. Okay, I didn't specify the path. It's not recording. Let me go. Let me. I think it's in headless mode. Probably. Uh, no. So you will not see it. Uh, I think so. No. 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 no headless. Uh, I. It is not in headless mode. Okay. It is quitting here. No. Okay, can you try to replay it now? Okay. Just click on play button. Uh, in the ID or here? Like, should I run the program yeah, or? In the Selenium ID, yes. Okay. At least we will see if all IDs in CSS are persistent. Yeah, let me do one thing. Let me go and uh, create a new project and let let's compare with this project test test Okay. okay, so there is no content at all. <laughs> it's but we can get the IDs whether IDs are same or not. That yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, it is taking by CSS selector here and here it is taking by ID. So I think for everything it it might change because it depends on the fr front end frameworks what they are using. 
they are using something like a dynamic uh, framework like react it actually uh, changes uh, the uh, id and uh, css selector or anything Mm -hmm. yeah it is uh, here it is taking by uh, like uh, id and it is taking here by css selector okay can, can you go back to this page again yeah uh, which one? Ah, uh, just the original page. No, original page. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, the. Are you talking about this one? Historical newspaper. Uh, the website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um. Hello. Okay. So look, um. What I see here, so we have Kingston Daily Freeman, and uh, it's in, in uh, inside of text, and also it's in title. Okay, okay. And is it actually corresponding? Yeah, I think it's corresponding, look. So probably uh, we can try to recognize uh, where, actually, we can find some full text uh, based on, on the title. Okay, okay. You see? Oh. So if, uh, yeah, oh, wait, wait a second. So you just, uh, yeah, so, wait, 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 wait. So do we have some, some uh, persistent ID here? Yeah, I think so. Let me check. Go that. back to, to URL again, to any article. Okay. Let me go to this article. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay, it's loading. Oh, look. It was interesting. Can you refresh again? Okay. I think this uh, part uh, where you, you see issue and article, it's loading from some source, JavaScript. Uh, yeah, I think no, so. no, go, go to um, to left side again. Okay, this one. Okay. Just, just refresh, refresh and see. Uh, so left part is coming from some API. So look. You see it's loading. Where, where uh, you, you see uh, loading, uh, it means it, it's querying some API. So this is where you can get actually full text. Okay. So now you, you, you need to recognize uh, this uh, request okay. and you can query it manually. So okay. I think with uh, Rockland, uh, City Journal, uh, blah, 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 it's uh, probably persistent identifier that will be used to query some API to produce uh, this text block on, on, on the left side. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is a persistent ID. So if you'll yeah so if you'll inspect it probably you'll be able to get uh yeah go down no yeah, this page is content not... look no go this down is... a little bit no this it no. that's it i think uh, once i click in this text it will uh yeah It's like I need to uh, press on the text so that it it, it will load. Oh wait, is it changing? Yeah, uh, when uh, like uh, the, the article uh, means the newspaper uh, has some sections. Oh, if I click on sections. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah. And uh, uh, wherever we find the uh, keyword that is Spanish or Spanish flu, uh, it will be highlighted uh, like this. Let me zoom it. 
it will be highlighted something like that mm -hmm. but obviously you just need uh, this block from left side this uh, full yeah. text yeah you need to find uh, in, in in html you need to find the place that actually is loading and uh, you need to try to load it uh, manually okay and i also think that probably uh so this is just some, some kind of position so like uh, rock uh, rockland city journal and after one eight and annual uh, point and from point probably it's block two and probably position 37 or something okay i think okay. what will happen if it will change in in, in in url you will change like three uh two on three you will if you'll replace it yeah sure. go here and replace two point on three point okay i think yeah just a minute mm -hmm. no in Okay, invalid. Mm. Yeah. So probably it's a part of one persistent identifier. Yeah. Oh, uh, this position, uh, SR pose. No, uh, yeah, I think if I change, uh, let me keep it as two, and if I change it as three, uh, still the document will run. Like mm -hmm. I think this this is the position of the uh, like uh, uh, the points like these sections. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you go back to full text to the left side? Okay. And just to see if there is some some iframe or something. Yeah. Click on on right button. Okay. There's an ID tag for it. Document display left plane. Left pane section text container. <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait! And now you There's found an it. ID, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we we just strip all the text in that uh, because yeah. it's funny for the one that I'm looking at. Uh, it's got um, it, it actually breaks it up, uh, so it's got like the first part of the sentence and then the rest in, in one, uh, under one paragraph tag. And then it's got the rest of it under a second paragraph tag. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably just have to scrape the entire, like all the text from the, from the whole section there. Yeah. It makes sense. Mm, and how can we uh, know the sections like, the highlighted keyword how can we uh, do it like we can use uh, selenium yeah that will be better but we need no, to I, find I think it we, i think we, we just need full text of uh, this fragment because it contains uh, well kind of relevant information at least some spanish uh, word is highlighted so Okay. It should be enough, and after we'll do um, all these uh, spacey stuff uh, just to define relevant fragments. Okay, okay. So it can be done in this way. Uh, and I was thinking, is there any advanced search, uh, Alex? Is there any advanced search so that we can um, get the uh, time, even the date range? Yeah. 19, 18 to Yeah, 19. yeah. So there's a filter just to the right of the of the magnifying glass where you can put in the date range uh, and then you can search for articles that only have text, I think. Okay. Uh, okay. Or those that have images. Okay. But yeah, so we, oh, we yeah, can, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, don't, I don't think we'll have a problem. I think it'll be, a, 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 it won't be too much trouble. Uh, I mean, my experience so far has given me a little bit of grief, but. but. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, and so, also the decimals that you guys were playing with earlier in the in the URL. It's like it's got it's it's got typically 
the newspaper name and then the date of the article and then like the one I'm looking at as 01.2.4. Mm -hmm. And so I think those are referring to maybe page numbers in the newspaper and mm -hmm. then article sections as well because I changed mine from like point zero point one point two uh or I mean one point two point four to one point two point three and it just went to uh, another section on the same page of the article or on the same page of the newspaper. So they're all indexed separately like each story in the newspaper is indexed separately mm -hmm. which may or may not be helpful, you know, but Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good. So let let's try to collect some some data and uh, yeah probably after we get something we, we can already use uh, some elements of our pipeline because uh, I already shared uh, with some people uh, coronavirus infrastructure so. We just basically released uh, like like second version, and uh, Alex, I will share the li link with you as well, and uh, you can actually run uh, Coronavirus uh, stuff uh, locally also on your computer. So you'll get the Kana uh, out of the box uh, and uh, other interesting packages. Uh, cool, cool. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks for telling me both of you guys about the Selenium IDE. I didn't know. I thought it was just a, a package for Python. So that's been helpful. No, no. To me so so I, I, th I think so. Uh, uh, here it's installed uh, just a, a standalone application, but uh, yeah. the power of Selenium IDE because you can use it together with uh, Chrome. So mm -hmm. you can get it integrated in Chrome and uh, it's just basically a plugin. So you can activate it anytime. If you if you see some interesting source and you can record record okay. your and after you can use uh, some uh, packages uh, to get stuff from those. Yeah. Okay. It's very okay. useful. And cool. I still believe I still believe uh, there is great potential even if some uh, ideas uh, will be changed. So well, it's possible to automate everything still. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you. Uh, is there anything else that we need to talk about, Shreda? Uh, I think uh, nothing from my side. Uh, a little bit, uh, Erin has some doubts. You can ask Erin. Uh, hello? Hi. Hey, Erin. Yeah, hi. Uh, since I joined Liz, I'll ask Shreda what you said earlier. Sorry for coming late. No problem, but but I, I think we will just just publish this video uh, afterwards, so you will okay. not do something. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and thanks I mean, for coming. Th yeah, thanks for joining. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. Appreciate your help. Yeah. Th thanks. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks, See you. Bye. 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 Bye.